We're going to take a look at the answers to numbers three and four on the forces problems with the coefficient of friction mu in them. In number three, a 20 kilogram mass is allowed to accelerate down a 15 degree ramp. The coefficient of friction between the block and the ramp is 0.25 and the, we know the block, as it said in the problem, is 20 kilograms. Part A, what is the acceleration of the block down the ramp? And B, assuming the block starts from rest, how long will it take the block to slide 30 meters? So you got to make sure we have our forces correct. The normal force is in the upward y direction, force of gravity perpendicular is in the downward y direction. Gravity parallel pulls to the right and the force of friction pulls to the left. The numbers that were given in the problem, the coefficient of friction is 0.25. The initial speed as it slides down the ramp is zero. It's going to slide a total of 30 meters and we're trying to find the acceleration and the time. Now every time that we are going to be using the force of friction with the coefficient of friction, we need to know what the normal force is because that's what the equation for friction is. Friction is the coefficient times the normal force. Well, I know the normal force is upward. The force of gravity perpendicular is downward, so they are equal to each other because it's not accelerating in the up and down directions. So force of gravity perpendicular, we have an equation for that. It's on your equation sheet, which is the cosine of 15 degrees times the mass, which is 20 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared. Once we plug all that in the calculator, we get that the normal force is equal to 189.3 newtons. Now we can find the acceleration, which is what we wanted in part A. Gravity parallel pulls down and to the right. So going to the right means that it is going to be positive, and force of friction is the one going to the left, so that's why it is negative in this equation. And now we're out of force arrows, so that all equals ma. Wherever I had force of friction, I'm going to plug in the equation for friction, which is the coefficient times the normal force. That's why everything else in this, in this equation is exactly the same, except I plugged in what friction is, which is the mu times f of n. Now I'm going to solve for the acceleration. I just have a little bit of algebra to do. I just have to divide by my mass, which is why it is now in my denominator on the left. Now I can plug in my numbers. Force of gravity parallel, just using the equation on your equation sheet. And that is the sine of the angle, 15 degrees, times mass, 20 kilograms, times the g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. The coefficient, of the coefficient of friction is 0.25, the normal force is 189.3 newtons, and the mass is given at 20 kilograms. Once you plug that all into your calculator, you get an acceleration of 0.17 meters per second squared. And now we can move on to part B. Part B said, hey, how long is it going to take for this thing to slide 30 meters? Well, we have V naught, we have A, we have D. We just need to solve for time. So the thing that we don't have and don't care about is VF, which is why we pick the equation. D equals V naught T plus one half AT squared. V naught is zero, making this term cancel. So I have a little line through it. So once that goes away, D equals one half AT squared. Solving for T, I'm going to divide by one half or multiply by two. That's why there's a two in the top here. And I divided by the A, which is why it's in the denominator. And to get rid of the squared for the t, I do the square root. Plugging in my numbers, 2 just remains 2, d is 30 meters, and the acceleration is 0.17 meters per second squared, giving me a time of 18.79 seconds. Now let's take a look at number 4. Number 4, probably a familiar picture to you by now, there's a 60 kilogram box that's pulled by a 400 newton force at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of friction is 0.28. Part A says what's the acceleration of the box, and part B is what's the value of the normal force acting on the box. We're actually not going to find these in order because we need the normal force in order to find the acceleration. So here's my picture. I've got the normal force up. I've got force of gravity down. Friction's going to the right, and my force of pull is at an angle that's 30 degrees with the horizontal. There's an x part to my force, how much I pull to the left, and a y part to my force, how much I pull straight up. Force of pull was 400 newtons. That was given in the problem. The coefficient is 0.28. Acceleration is my question mark, and normal force is my question mark. Now we have a force that's at an angle. I'm going to find out what the y and what the x are. How I do that is using my SOHCAHTOA, my sine and cosine. Now the x, I'll just find that one first because alphabetically is first, and that's the adjacent side of this triangle. So if you remember from your SOHCAHTOA, that cosine is adjacent the x over the hypotenuse, which we know is 400 newtons. So cosine of 30 equals x over the hypotenuse, which is force of pull. So when I do a little bit of algebra on that to solve for the adjacent side, I get the cosine of 30 degrees 
times my hypotenuse, which is my how much I'm pulling, which is 400 newtons. Plugging in my numbers, cosine 30 times 400, and I get that I'm pulling 346.41 newtons to the left. Now I'm going to solve for the y. The y is the opposite side of this triangle. So I, instead of using cosine, I'm going to use the sine, but everything else is the same. Sine of my angle, which is 30 degrees, times the hypotenuse, which is my force of pull, is going to give me my y. So that's a sine of 30 times 400, which tells me I'm pulling 200 newtons straight up. Now that I've done my components, my x and y parts, I can find the normal force. We're going to take a look at what forces are going in the up and down. The normal is going upward. We're pulling upward, that's the y, and gravity pulls down. So here's where my equation comes in. My normal plus my upward pull equals gravity because my up stuff equals my down stuff. Up by equals down because it's not accelerating up and down. It's only accelerating left and right. Solving for the normal force, I can move grab my y over. So now it's gravity minus the pull that I'm going upward, and that's going to give me the normal. So I just have to plug in my numbers. Force of gravity is the mass, 60 kilograms, times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, minus how much I pull upward, which is 200, and that gives me a normal force of 388 newtons. Now we can solve for that acceleration. Force of friction goes to the right. That's why it's positive in my equation. The force of pull to the left, or the x, is to the left, so it is negative. And all of that's going to equal ma because I'm out of left-right arrows. Where I had force of friction, I'm just going to write the equation for it, which is the coefficient times the normal force. I'm going to divide by my mass to solve for acceleration, so that's why it's in the denominator here. And I can plug in my numbers. The coefficient was the 0.28. The normal force we just solved for, 388 newtons and the x we solve for, which is 346.41 newtons, dividing by the mass, which is 60 kilograms. When I plug in my numbers into my calculator, I get negative 3.96 meters per second squared. Remember, negative just means going to the left, and since I'm pulling to the left, that makes sense. Our answer should be negative.